Uh, it looks like we are and back, back running. Yeah, sorry for that little hiccup there. Not sure what happened. But nothing has changed. Still Eaglin leading here. I think what happened there at the 20 minute mark, we had someone run across track and caused Devin Ryan to fall. <laughs> he tripped over our cable. Uh, caused a problem here in the booth. Bit of technical difficulties here in Thunder Valley, but nothing we can't charge our way through. And well, still a uh, little bit of a gap opened up now for Eaglin. Devin Ryan trying to give chase in second. 22 yeah, I was gonna say, and a half A little bit in. stagnant if you go down to fifth, sixth, seventh. Seberg just made a pass up the inside on Phil Bowl. These guys are kind of going at it right now a little bit. Phil Bowles about right where he was, right? Um, yeah. First one of Phil Bowl was eighth, so pretty solid day for him. Seberg lost a little bit, but man, Tyler Lang getting up in the fourth, not bad by him at all with that bad start. But Sean Klein, 13th, not good day for him. Gebhart, 15th, two bad starts and not able to make it work. Dickerson all the way back in 17th. Yeah, Kevin a... Gonzalez was top 10, he's in 24th. So go ahead. This has been such a weird day. It is just completely flipped from the first to the second moto uh, in terms of who we got inside of this top 10. And really guys that we expected to potentially challenge for the win today, almost nowhere in sight. Very, very strange as battle for the lead. Bruin again, Devin Ryan and Colby Eagland going at it with about six minutes and two laps remaining. Looks like Devin caught up about four seconds on him there last lap around. Colby Eaglin around a 213, Devin Ryan run a 2096. So, potential little mistake there late in the lap out of Colby Eaglin. Either way, it has definitely presented us with a great finish to this one. If Devin Ryan can keep the challenge on, all the way to the very tip top of the racetrack and coming back down the hill, Ryan looks like he's got some lines working for him. seem to be pushing them AMA stakes, but I don't think every one of these riders has the uh, full object pack in to keep some, keep their FPS up during the race. Oh man, it is on. Look at these two guys out front ripping. Devin Ryan trying to put the pressure on and switching his lines up to do so. Look at this around the outside. Might turn into the inside in the next corner. Not he quite. Made it work. Almost. Battle for the lead here in Colorado, second moto. And this would actually change hands the overall if Devin Ryan could get around Colby Eagland. It would go in the favor of Tyler Lang, who still sits in fourth. Comfortably sitting in fourth, it looks like as well. So if Tyler Lang keeps it on two wheels, he can be the potential winner today. Colby Eaglin wants to shut the door on that opportunity, not only for Lang, but for Devin Ryan, who's trying to turn around a bad first moto. Back and forth they go, essentially. Ryan closes up, makes a couple mistakes, then closes right back up again. It just seems like a yo-yo effect at the moment. These guys getting late into the second moto. I'm sure their uh, hands are getting sweaty and Mentally getting a little bit fatigued, getting their lines and everything like that. So having a little reset like that's good. Good for the rider to charge back into it. Devin Ryan clipped a tough block coming up the hill. That could have been disastrous, and he's really having to deal with the 85 here. Putting a lot of pressure on from behind. Oh, oh mistake from Eagland. Ryan goes to the lead on the uphill. Devin Ryan out front in Colorado. We have three and a half minutes left to go. That's going to give... Ah, uh, man. Put him back to 3-2. This mother finishes. Yeah, that would give, at least for the moment, Tyler Lane the overall. Hunter Porch is flipping down the hill. 
So he is now out of this battle. Another guy, Tyler Lang's going outside though. Let's see if he ends up getting into him or can cut inside or if Porsche can hang on. But if Dickerson gets in the third or if Lang gets in the third. It still could go Eaglin's way with a victory with a 3-1 to a 1-3. But at the moment, it is all Eaglin's destiny. He has to pass Devin Ryan to win the overall and obviously win the moto as well. Both these guys keeping it straight over the triple. They don't want to throw any more whips. They've lost that uh, groove they were in. They're just trying to keep it on two wheels. That's how track the how the track is shaping up late in this moto. It is anybody's race as they work their way by the mechanics area. Less than two and a half minutes before the clock expires, and then we'll have two more laps to go. It is Lang crunch is right. time. Lang is right on porch. The only thing I'm seeing is some of the lines he's still opting to use the same line. If something happens to porch, then he might have himself back, and maybe he can't uh, have that overall even if he gets second. If uh, Eaglin gets second, you know, he could lose that fifth to Whelan, but you never know. I would just, man, I would be careful if I was laying with an overall pretty much in your grasp. Kind of all up to Eaglin right now. If he can catch Devin Ryan, if Devin Ryan can hold it on. Devin turning a 211 last time around, and Eaglin running a 215, so the spread getting a little bigger between those two. Yeah, Porch 220. Tyler Lang still at a 210 back here in the battle for third and fourth. I thought this mother was going to be a lot closer. I feel like that's how they were for the last week. But as far as I saw, where the guys kind of figure out the track for mother too. But man, this race is kind of spread out. Lang having to go here at Porch coming up the hill. This would be for third. And really put that pressure on Eaglin to go for the lead. Porch scrubs it, lands in too high of a gear, loses a little bit of drive. Lang is working this far outside, wow. but I saw Devin Ryan working earlier. and He had to back it down, actually. Hunter had cut off the line. He had nowhere to go. Yeah, that's a pretty good job by Hunter. I know a lot of those guys are leaving a little bit, trying to stay a little bit tighter inside, but Lang is working this. Oh, might have a Lang. drive down the inside here. Scrubs, it goes a little long. Gotta watch out for the down rider. <laughs> To the inside goes Lang. Does he make that pass stick? Yes, he does. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, he will. Oh, and Porch gets hung up on the inside. Yeah, you, you see, that's why those guys aren't going inside anymore. Those breaking bumps, even before the wall, are kind of death. But, man, Hunter really got kind of screwed there. I feel like when he went around the lap rider, he, uh, he was still going to hit that inside line from where he was set up. But he just got all messed up. And I just saw a mistake out of Eaglin, so that has opened up the lead once again for Devin Ryan as the two-lap board about to come out. Time has expired here in Colorado. Devin Ryan has opened up a pretty decent-sized gap over Eaglin. It's manageable at this point, no doubt, with two laps left to go. Shout out to Devin Ryan for the performance here in second moto. I really wish you would have backed it up with first moto, but... Uh... Can't win them all. I saw he was having some fun with Decope in the back of the pack, throwing some whips, so that's cool. He's still having fun in the game at the competitive level these days. Higher yep. competitive level. Keep it yeah, fun. You know he's good enough to win. He got a third place start and stayed up here the whole time. I. You know he can win, but man, it's hard for, as you can see from uh, Sean Klein even, both motos today, Walter Gebhardt, who's still back in 14th. If you don't get a start, some, I feel like most people aren't able to bring it up back to the pack. It's really hard to stay consistent. It makes you kind of appreciate the people who are always up there on the starts and always in the top 10 uh, throughout this outdoor series. Another OG rider in the back of the pack, Roy Mitchell, eighth place. Changed a few positions from the start, doing pretty well for whip style, battling with Phil Bull and uh, Ben Seberg. Yeah, and Mitchell yeah. was in sixth in that first race, so he's trying to end up exactly where he was in that first race and just have a good, solid couple finishes here. He's got to get around a couple of real fast dudes here in Seberg and Bull, though. Ooh, almost pushes the front, yeah, and 
last Moto Jones. I called him the Diesel. He's kind of they got that lap rider down here. They got to avoid, but he's one of those guys who backs it off and he can stay consistent for a whole race. And hey, that's gonna get you top tens. That's the OG mentality for sure. It looks a little laggy, so uh, I was wondering <laughs> yeah. why some guys were avoiding him. <laughs> he seems to be skipping around a little bit. Yeah, Philbull and Seberg follow each other to this outside. Seberg oh. goes down after getting a little bit sketchy coming into that rut, but Roy's going to opt to this rough inside. And, man, Roy's just there. He's been there both of those. making it work. I'm not too sure on the year he joined. He's been around since I'd say probably 2012, 2011 with the whip style crew, Brina. Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine. <laughs> 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 he would. Uh -huh. We'll crack a little joke there at the end of this moto. Speaking of uh, moto. all I know is still to this day the most iconic MXM takeout I've ever seen is uh, for sure was Tyson on Brina. Yep. It was uh, uh 2012. Orleans. Houston, maybe. Uh, New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. God, that was one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. Do you remember my uh, 2011 Supercross setup? I had a Rhino. I used to uh, punt her off the track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Brina. We'll see her later on tonight in the 450 class. Mopping me. She's way faster now, Brina. I know. Hey. Yeah, she's killing it. She uh, she won a race in 2012 before you did, so, I mean. Oh, yeah. Hey, winning then, never, winning now. <laughs> she never left. I remember Utah. I was uh, battling with her for a second-place position in one of the motos, and I got stuck in the fifth-wide section in a SpongeBob for about two minutes, but she was up there battling with me top three, so she's always been good. I think kind of took a hiatus as some of the people have and uh kind of gotta get your life together and then now just coming back for fun but she's definitely got a lot of her speed back for sure we have a change for second on track that is really gonna put the nail in the coffin for colby eaglin tyler lang has gone around him and lang has now really asserted himself as the overall victor here today one two scores will definitely get it done he could have still finished third and taking it but Gets around Eaglin, his closest challenger for the overall victory today. And sets off ahead of him in second. And where was Lang at uh, lap one? He was, he was out of points position. Yeah, for sure. buried down in the field at lap one. So a brilliant charge to the field by the 18 machine here. He's a guy, too. I question his, his consistency with his fast lap times, but maybe backed it down a little bit. After a lot of falls, shoot, I think the leader probably had at least close to five falls last race or last moto, and I don't think these guys up front fell more than once or twice. So, oh, was that the end of the race right there? That was the end yes, of the sir. race. We were oh, Kevin Ryan, <laughs> we did not call your moto win. You freaking killed it. Well, my timing and scoring is completely junk at this point, but finally. It still shows Eagland as the leader, right? which it's not, oh, yeah, obviously. You're done. <laughs> okay. We got a. Eagland has a close finish, though, besides Lang. Unless there's some crazy cut stuff going on, uh, Eagland sh or uh, Lang should be your overall uh, winner. Do you want to uh, run either? down real quick, Kellen? Yeah, because I'm trying to load back in. <laughs> Alright, so while Kellen gets the stream sorted out, in first place we have Devin Ryan for Active Co. Second place, Tyler Lang, MV Films. Third place, Kobe, Kobe Eagland, Tagger Designs. Fourth place, Hunter Porch. Fifth place, Bryce Whelan. Sixth place, Roy Mitchell. Seventh place, Ben Seberg. Eighth place, Braden Carter. Ninth place, Zoe Cross. Tenth place, Phil Bull. And A. Wood, if you want to take over from here. What place, 10? Sorry. 11. 11th place, we've got uh, Sean Klein, Jordan Moxie. Uh, Sean Klein actually gained four positions that last lap, I'm pretty sure. Moxie, 12th. Daniel Mills, Tagger Designs, 13th. Walter Gebhardt, 14th. Jeremy Squabro still coming in uh, for 15th with Craig Lee right on his butt. Let's see if Wow, can Craig Lee going for the hug Craig over him. Launch to finish only two tenths behind him. That was almost super sick. Mora, 17th. Alana Solis, uh, 18th. Luke Sullivan might go for the same. 
Oh no, sorry, he's way back. Thought it was a different corner. Alanis with Luke Sullivan only 0.7 back. Let's see how these guys come in line and finish. Alanis blows the inside, Sullivan blows the outside. Sullivan's gonna settle for 19th still. Jake Warden 20th. Kevin Gonzalez after a seventh first moto finishes 21st outside the points. Tyler Sylvia. He was 16th last moto, gets a 22nd. Austin Bear, Dalton Plessinger, Mudge, Rogers, Alexander, Reed. Another Rogers, Powers, Dickerson, Rage Quit. Dickerson finished fourth wow. place last moto and Rage Quit. Wow. 30 credited with a 31st. Um, I think another NorCal name to drop down there, D. Copeland. Another DNF yeah. finish. His bike had blown up off the start. That's okay. Uh, get him next week, D. Cope. <laughs> yeah, D. Cope will work on those Tiger motor motors. Uh, weren't working very good at altitude with a been 26. Holy cuts. Braden Carter, 13 seconds of cuts, loses four positions in the final standings. Jesus. It's worse than last week. Braden oh, goes cool. back to 11th. What? So your and overall winner here, back. your overall winner here today is going to be Tyler Lang on the number 18 MV Films Machine, and that will do it for the 250 class here, round number three of the Ride365.com Nationals at Thunder Valley. I want to give a big thank you, of course, to Andrew Wood, Austin Jones. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We're going to head to a quick little commercial break here and be back on the other side of this one with the 450 class uh, so we'll see you guys in just a quick moment <laughs> 